This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, so you've come back. You must be a glutton for punishment. Let's go through there and have a play around with the accounting standards and the rules for financial instruments. Uh, the way in which it's going to be split up is we're going to go through and look at financial assets first. Uh, once we've looked at financial assets, we'll then move on to financial liabilities. And then we will go through there and look at your convertibles, okay? So some form of compound instrument whereby there is some part debt and some part equity. Ooh, sounds a bit, sounds a bit funny, doesn't it? And a bit strange. Sounds complicated if you ask me. Uh, so we're looking at financial assets. So again, you can see we've got the, the usual scenario about what we do initially and then what we do subsequently. So remember the entries that you're thinking about here with your financial assets, you're buying into some other entities, debt or equity. So you're crediting bank, debiting the investments. Yeah. So when we do that initially, you're going to recognize it at fair value, including any transaction costs. So if you pay any transaction costs to a broker, as part of the purchase of the investment that is capitalized because they are directly attributable uh, to the purchase of that asset. You would not have incurred them if you were not buying the investment in shares or the investment in debt. However, just note there is this scenario here whereby when we look at the measurement shortly, uh, unless it's fair value through profit or loss. Uh, and what happens there? is that you, if you have any fair value through profit or loss financial assets, then the transaction costs go immediately through profit or loss. So you don't capitalise them as part of the investment, you expense them immediately. So, so just be aware of that little quirk that there is. Okay. Uh, so what you've got then is when you initially measure that financial asset, you need to go through there and determine whether or not that financial asset is fair value through profit or loss, which is there as the default category. Uh, fair value through other comprehensive income or this funky amortized cost type of financial asset. So what we've got there, uh, fair value through profit or loss sometimes recognized or abbreviated to FVTPL, fair value through profit or loss. That's the default category for, for any equity shares that you have. Okay. If that's the case, yep, yeah, because it's fair value through profit or loss, transaction costs go through profit or loss immediately. But just remember then you remeasure to fair value and you do that at the reporting date. And it's clearly quite literal there in that your gains and losses go through profit or loss, hence why it is called fair value through profit or loss. Okay. Uh, so in the exam, you'll be told what you initially purchase it at. You'll be told the transaction cost that you expense. You will then be told the fair value at the reporting date, and then you'll need to work out the gain or the loss. Okay. Any gain or loss then goes immediately to, to profit or loss. Okay. Uh, you've then got the other alternative, fair value through other comprehensive income. So F V T O C I for short. It's still quite long, isn't it? Uh, but again, it's quite literal. Okay, uh, in that you remeasure to fair value at each reporting date, and then gains and losses go. Uh, is it there to other comprehensive income? But, but what is a fair value through other comprehensive income, financial asset investment in equity shares? Well, the key distinction there is that you bought those shares not with the intent to trade them and to sell them in the short term, hence the default fair value through profit or loss category. We are going to go through there and hold the assets. OK, uh, there is a strategic intent. To hold the asset. So we're not going to sell it in the, in the short term effectively. 
Now, I know this brings in all sorts of, of judgments uh, in the real world with regards to how much time do we give it before we think that it's, you know, being held for, for the long term and not the short term. I'll leave that up to you in the real world. I suppose it's an audit risk, isn't it? When you buy a new investment in equity shares, that it's classified incorrectly. OK, uh, but in the exam, it will be quite clear. So if it doesn't say anything about the intent, default category, fair value through profit or loss. If it says something about we intend to hold it for the foreseeable future, then that therefore means that we are designating it at initial inception as fair value through other comprehensive income okay there we go uh, and then what we've got is that this other category of amortized cost normally it applies to your investments in debt okay uh, but there is a small caveat within that so what you've got there is your financial asset is measured at this amortized cost and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, amortized cost in a moment uh, is that you have to pass the two following tests the business model test and the contractual cash flow test so the business model test goes through there and looks at effectively your intent so you have this investment in debt is it your intent to hold the asset until its maturity date uh, to go through there and collect all the contractual cash flows, such as the, the coupon interest attached to the debt and the principal on redemption. As well as that, there also needs to be contractual cash flows within it. So there needs to be an obligation that you are going to receive cash. And with investment in debt, that's highly likely, isn't it? The fact there that you are buying that debt and the reason why is that you are then going to get interest based upon the coupon rate and the par value over the life of the instrument okay uh do just be careful uh there is a scenario and i just don't think you'll get it within financial reporting but it remains to be seen is that you could have an investment in debt that is classified as fair value through other comprehensive income and that would only be the case when it was looking at the business model test okay so have a look at the business model test if the intent isn't to hold it to its maturity date but it can collect the contractual cash flows and then sell that asset so effectively you have an investment in debt that is tradable then what happens there is that will become fair value through other comprehensive income okay I just don't think that's going to appear within financial reporting. OK, but but just have an awareness of it. If you've bought the debt and you're looking to go through there and maybe sell it in the future, then yes, there are contractual cash flows attached to it. But your business model is to collect those cash flows and sell it. Then it will be fair value through other comprehensive income. OK, there we go. Uh, excellent.